Good morning. This is Adam Woody School, with Fair Path Horses. This is Tux, eight year old American Pain Horse. We're going to talk about some trainer safety issues, some really common stuff, and we'll talk about some uh, trainer loading problems, really common problems that aren't as hard to fix as you might think. This is the first time Tux has been in front of a crowd, so we'll see how he does. Tux. You bow. You bow. You lay down. Takes him just a minute to shift his weight. Good. Good boy. Good. <laughs> So Tux has been in training for probably, uh, probably uh, almost a year, I guess. Um, he's doing really well, I'm really pleased with him. But while he's taking a nap, we're going to talk about some common trailer safety uh, problems that people don't think, normally think about. But and we'll kind of start from the ground up. We'll talk about what about your tires. Uh, now, how often do you check your tires? Uh, you know, uh, this time of year when the weather fluctuates. Uh, like it does, uh, our tires can become very underinflated and we don't really notice it until we get a load on there. And so with the underinflated tire going down the road, uh, that's when they get hot. That's when they're going to come apart. Uh, so we've got to make sure we have proper air in our tires. Um, we've got to make sure our trailer is hooked up properly. We've got to make sure we've got our safety chains hooked up. Uh, we should check our emergency breakaway in nice. We, we want to make sure that, that our emergency breakaway has a, has a battery in it that works. Um, a lot of times those batteries have been in there for 10 or 15 years if we have an older trailer and they're not any good. You know, or your truck's not properly wired to charge that battery, so we want to make sure, go back to sleep. <laughs> we want to make sure that uh, those batteries are charging, so then you can even disconnect that up there and put your truck in gear, and then, uh, uh, you know, just let's see if it rolls, see if those brakes are holding. And then you can put it right back together and it should cut the brakes back off. So, uh, so after we make sure it's hooked up, uh, the next very important item that's going to be in the trailer is going to be your floor. Okay? So obviously the horses use the bathroom in there. And, uh, that flooring, uh, the rubber matting holds moisture underneath it. And we want to lift that matting up, jump up down the floor, and make sure it's not riding. Uh, for horror stories, you know, horses' legs going through trailers, and you get where you're going, and, and uh, obviously it's a disaster. So, we want to make certain that our horses are safe in the trailer, and uh, make sure that flooring uh, is solid. We want to check our lights. We we'll check our lights. We we'll make sure they're all working. Maybe turn your flashes on so you can walk around and check, uh, and uh, make sure all is working properly before you head out down the road. Um, you know, your brake lights, uh, we want to make sure those are working. So somebody behind us said this in the back, and they're trying to run our horses. So, we'll get to some common trailer loading uh, problems and talk about uh, kind of why those occur uh, and uh, kind of how to fix them. We don't have a whole lot of time, so we'll, we'll kind of go through some, some key things. Um, how many of us have, have had a horse that won't load the trailer? Few of us, probably everybody, right? So, uh, you know, it, it's such a common issue, such a common problem. But the majority, or I'll say all the time, you know, it's really not a trailer problem. Okay? It's not a trailer problem. You know, pretty much all the time it's going to be either fear or lack of respect. Okay? And, and something that, that happens is people always wait until they're late to go somewhere to get their horse out. Okay, they decide they're going to go ride and they're going to go somewhere. And what happens is when you're late, you tend to act more like a predator. Okay, and when you act more like a predator, guess what? Your horse acts more like a prey animal. Right? So, so obviously, this isn't the first time that Tux is laid down. He's laid down on us. He knows that this is a place where he can rest. But, you know, him teaching him to lay down is actually kind of similar to teaching him to load the trailer. Okay? It's all about making the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. Right? So, but before I ever decided to teach him to 
tricks. Um, I can't tell you how many countless hours I spent just prep work, just doing tons of groundwork, and gaining his respect, gaining his trust. Okay? And if you can't, if you can't move the horse's legs, you're not going to gain their trust. You're not going to gain their trust with a, with a feed bucket, you know, putting feed in the trailer. You're not going to gain their respect that way. You got to be able to move their feet. So we'll talk about how to do their feet. Talk about some exercises you can do uh, when we go to, go to that trailer. So in the beginning, you know, teaching our horses to move their feet, we're not even going to be close to the trailer. And preferably, preferably we need to do that a few days before the horse, you know, even ever had to take the horse somewhere. Okay, ever had to ask them to get in that trailer. So, you know, obviously, you know, like I said, just like uh, he's very so sensitized, you know, he may jump up and be silly, you know, so, you know, you never know, I understand, but um, I just spent so much time with him, and that's where I want him to be. I want him to be respectful and be trusting me before I, I'm ever going to go to the trailer and ask him to get in. Okay? Even if they haven't been in that trailer before, you know, he's going to, he knows every other time that I've asked him to move his feet, it didn't hurt him. Okay? He was okay. So he's, he's built some respect, built some trust. But even though we see he'll, I do this at home all the time. You can tell a good job. Oh. <laughs> and we'll work on some of that a little bit. Up, up. Oh, so we want to be able to move our horses' feet. Like I said, it's, in, uh, it's the only way you're going to gain their respect is moving their feet. And we'll, like I said, we'll go over some exercises. We sit. We sit more. Let me eat you. I'm going to eat you right now. Okay? So we don't want to do that. We don't want to, 
you know, treat them that way and act like a, so much like a predator. When you can stop acting so much like a predator, your horse will stop acting so much like a prey animal. Okay? It's very important. Very important. We can stop acting so much like a predator, our horses will stop acting so much like a prey animal. So, after I know, I can back them up. And at first, you know, people say, you know, he holds his head away from the air and all this stuff. Well, you know, some of those problems will take care of themselves. You start moving their feet, you know, they throw their head up in the air because their feet are locked. Okay? They start moving their feet, their head comes down. Alright? But I'm not going to worry about some of that stuff with the horse in the beginning. I'm just worried about moving their feet. They're going to figure out real quickly, they're really get to rest, and, and that's not going to be such a bad Bad thing. So after I back him up, I'm going to go and start moving his hind quarters. I want to be able to disengage his hind quarters. Okay, so if the horse that has his, his back legs disengaged, if he's standing across, he can't bug the bolt or rear. Okay, so I want to be able to sit him in the circle and watch him ask him to yield his hind quarters and give me two eyes. Okay, so I'm going to ask, I'm going to first ask him, always ask like the perfect. So the horse is the horse anticipate everything, right? Horses anticipate everything. So that's why it's so important that we do it the same way every time and that we ask like we're perfect. So I'm going to ask him just to back the body language. And he knows what to do, but if he didn't, if he didn't, you don't have to stick or use the NLE lead or something like that, I'm just going to apply more energy, okay? And I'm going to apply as much energy as it takes until, until he moves, okay? And he's going to anticipate that. I might like use less and less and less energy until eventually I just ask like he's perfect with active body language and he's going to, he's going to move. Okay? Just by looking. Okay? Whether it's front end or back end on both sides. Alright? I want to make certain that, that you're everything on both sides. How many know that what a horse sees out of their left eye, they do not see out of their right? Okay? So a lot of people think I'm crazy when I say stuff like that. Um, but you know, you can be sensitized on what and a really good example of this is when you get another horse, oh he's been ridden all these years, whatever, but, but he won't even lead on his right side. Okay? He can't saddle him on his right side. He probably never has been. Okay? But he's just fine on his left. Right? That's where everybody leads and mounts and saddles, does all those things. So usually getting your horse in. After the first few weeks, always on the right side. Okay? Just working on things like that. So I can back him out of my space, I can get him out of my area. I'm going to teach him to move his hind quarters. Okay? And a horse that comes to training is going to learn a lot more than this before I go to the trailer. But just, just uh, you know, get a horse loaded in a few days and, and of course be safe for you and your horse. You know, these are just the key things I want to be able to do. Or we'll go move them around. Okay? And then, when I know I can move him out of my space, I'm going to work on sitting him. The oldest hind quarters. And, and that new horse, you know, I want to make sure he's, he wants to come in with me. He knows me and with me and gets some rest. So that's why he's just looking for me to ask him to come in. So I'll send him through, you'll design quarters, and this will be a little lazy. And don't go to the trailer right away. Like I said, the majority of the time it's not a trailer loading problem. I mean, 98% of the time it is not a trailer loading problem. It's a respect problem. Okay? Like I said, you're not going to gain that respect with feed or with treats. Sometimes those things are nice. But that's not how you're going to gain the respect. So I mean, use the wall, the barn, the barn hallway, whatever, out in the arena. You can move their feet out in the, out in the arena or in the field. I, I don't know why you think you're going to move them when you get in that trailer. So that's what I want. I want the horse to be very respectful. Move their feet when I ask them to move. So, we'll talk about when it is time to go to the trailer, and we'll talk about a few things inside the trailer. 
So, with the door shut, with the door shut, he's being really lazy today. I'm not going to go to trailer and expect him to go around up in there or a new horse. So horses, you know, usually like to go around the sides. So I'm going to have a really good descending exercise. And I'm going to send them on both sides of the trailer. I'm just going to let him see this out of both, both eyes. And a new horse when they're really spooky about the trailer, if I send them up there to it in the beginning like this, if they want to smell it, if they want to look on it, if they want to chew on it, I just let them. Let them domesticate that trailer. Let them see it's not going to hurt them. Okay? So I'm going to do this on the front. I mean, on both sides. I'm going to do it on both sides today just to save time. But normally I will. I'll come to the back. We'll do the sending exercise at the back of the trailer. So another reason right here, if your horse is fearful of the trailer, another reason why it's so important that you can get him out of your space, okay? They're going to be scared of the trailer. They're going to crowd you, okay? So it's going to be very important that if he's going to crowd me, I can really get in there and push him out of my space, okay? So I really let him know that he is in my space, okay? You can't train a horse if you're dead with a broken leg, okay? So a thousand pound animal has to learn that this is my area, all right? So I'm gonna do the sitting exercise on all around the trailer, get them really good at that, moving their feet, you're working on me, all of you say, oh, I don't like doing very hard. Well, I'm just going to tell you, you're going to have a horse that's not respectful. You can't move their feet. You're going to go down the trail, and you're going to have to get your feet down. You're going to, your saddlebags are going to be so full of feet because you have to drop them the feet if that's what you use to get them in the trailer. So I want them to load because they're respectful. There's a time that he gets to rest. There's a time, you know, that I, I treat him, but... It's not what he's looking for, okay? But remember, so right here, that new horse, I sent him out to the trailer. If they want to smell it, sniff it, whatever, like I said, all the pressure's off. So remember, that pre-predator relationship, me standing looking at him like this is pressure, okay? You know, me walking in, see him tense up? Okay, that's, that's pressure, okay? It's a pre-predator relationship, all right? So when you can learn to control your body language, okay? You're, it's so much easier to train horses. So he knows, he knows if I'm relaxed by a passive body language or if I walk in with active body language. We're talking about a lion, okay? A lion is a horse's most natural predator or anything in the big cat family. So if I'm that lion and I have active body language, like I'm going to eat his tail, he knows it's time to move. But when I relax, a passive body language, he knows it's time to stand still. So that's, that's how he knows when I'm popping the whips or put a tarp over his head. So I know to stand still because my body language, I'm just relaxed, okay? That's how I reward them too. When he does what I'm asking, so if I'm just teaching them to back up, they're not going to back up very well, but one step, okay, I just need a little bit of effort in the beginning. One step, and that pressure's going to go away. I'm not even going to look at it, okay? I'm not even going to look at it. I just want to reward him. I don't think that's why. That's what they're looking for is that release of pressure. So we want that release to be as big and as quick as it possibly can. Okay, and that's where we get into your field and timing, which is how much pressure you apply and when to apply. Most importantly, when to release it. Okay? Okay, and you only get that through experience. So, now let's open the door. Can you open the door? Logan? What's that? It'll be fine. You can leave right there. Yeah, I may have to hold it. I don't know if it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. All right, so, come on. It really nice. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the sitting exercise.
And remember, anytime, anytime they want to investigate the trailer, of course, he's been loaded in this trailer probably 500 times. Uh, no. But it's, it's going to be handled the same way. People always say, how long is it going to take you to load my horse? Well, you never know. Some horses may take 30 minutes. Some horses may take three hours. But I guarantee you, if you take the time it takes, it'll take less time. We want it to be a lesson, okay? We want them to learn. And we want them, our ultimate goal is for him to crave to be in that trailer. Okay? I'll tell you how to do that. It's all about making the right thing easy and the wrong thing good for you. So trailers with ramps are sometimes easier to teach them in the beginning. But you've got to remember that ramps sometimes are spring-loaded, they bounce, they step up on them, they're not sure about them. All that's good stuff. I mean, just synthesize them too. So in the beginning, I may ask you to go over the trailer. Like I said, just let him sniff it out, let him investigate it. And anytime, I mean, you don't care about the trailer right now. He, he like a new horse will, though, so he's going to go over there. So right here. You know, with the new horse, you're just going to let them sniff. Let them check it out. Let them just no pressure. Okay? No pressure at all. And if he wants to back up, we may go back to back up and go back to work. Send him back up there. Okay, so even now, I'm communicating him to stop. He, he loaded up in there. Uh, but it's all body language. So let him investigate. Let him look, let him smell, let him chew, whatever, okay? He's licking his lips. That's a good sign that he's relaxed. He's just taking us in. And that's what we want. We want our horses to be relaxed. Licking their lips. They're just digesting what you're teaching them. Okay? So another thing, how many people have a horse that you can't get off the trailer? Okay? That stinks when you have to sell a horse with the trailer, right? <laughs> Feed them on there a few days. So, ultimately, in the beginning, I don't want my horse to just run right up on there. Okay? I want him to take maybe one step. Now, they back him up. Okay? Take him away from that trailer again. That's something a, a predator does not do. Okay? That's not a behavior of a predator. Okay? You know, to take him away from that trailer then. Alright? And, you know, at that point, he's going to, you know, I take him over there and just let him air up, let him rest. And he's like, shoo. I didn't get eaten. That was close. Okay? So, maybe let him take one step up in there, then let him uh, back him up, then maybe let him take two steps, and so forth. And we'll just keep building and keep building. Okay? So the whole time I'm teaching him that even though it's a tight claustrophobic area, he's okay. We'll just build his confidence. One step at a time if that's what it takes. Okay?
So like I said, it needs to be my idea when it gets on, when it gets off. So usually my cue for this last horse, I want to make sure that he's really good at backing out, okay? Because I can't get up in there, okay? So usually I'll tug on their tail a little bit and ask them to back out. Eventually that's my cue, they understand. When I tug on their tail, that means back out. But he does not need to back out until I ask him. A big thing about this last horse and about a straight load trailer is you gotta make sure their hand is untied, okay, before you open the store, okay? They'll anticipate backing out. You know, you want to tie their head, or, I mean, if their head's not untied, you, their head's not untied, their back legs will sometimes get on the ground if they're not tied up tight enough, and then, then it's a disaster. If the lead rope gets tied, lead rope gets tied, their back legs get slide underneath the trailer, and it's, it's really bad. So, even things like untying them, Okay? If he's tied up in the front of the trailer, you reach up like this to untie, you may get it untied the first time and it starts to back out. Okay? But the next time he may anticipate even more. Alright? So you just reach up there and untie him. You reach up there and untie him. He anticipates back now and you didn't get it untied at the time. Alright? So now your horse is disrespectful and doesn't know to give this pressure. See that pull on his pole and he'll just give it that pressure. Okay? So that's a respectful horse. He knows to give it that pressure. Okay? Most of the time, People are like this, and the horse is just sticking their head up in the air. Well, that's a horse that's going to panic when he's tied up. So, you're standing up in there, and he starts to pull back. Now you're standing in front of him in that tight space, and, he, and he's, he's panicking. Okay? So, he starts to back out. We want to pull him back up there and make him stand there. Untie him, let him stand there a minute. Make him, maybe step back and pull a little bit so he doesn't anticipate your body movement, meaning that you're fixing making him back out. I like for all my horses to back out on the trailer. Okay, I don't let them turn around. Uh, so I want them to all be able to back out. They're usually going to come out of the trailer slower and even more safely than, than lunging out. Make sure you don't stand out in front of your horse. Everybody, like I said, tries to do this. If you stand out in front of your horse and pull them, sometimes your horse will decide, okay? And they're going to do it all at once because they're fearful. All right? And then they're going to jump on top of it. Okay? Think about it all the time. Thank you all very much. Hope it was informative. Also, I'm giving away a free demo with your horse. Okay, at your place. You come by my booth and sign up. I'll come to your place and do a trailer demo with you and whoever you want to be there. Okay, work with your horse and you for free. Thank you very much.